We're going to review a little bit what evidence exists about this disease and mainly in the treatment. Etiology, as we know, is totally unknown. So we, for that reason, we call it idiopathic. And this is the, the cause most common, most common of flu in cats. Even more than 50% percent, percent this disease in comparison to another disease. Could be, uh, this disease can have two presentations. One of them is acute, that is the more common, when the cat come to us blocked. <coughs> And another uh, form is the chronic uh, philencystitis. The diagnosis is always for exclusion, okay? And I don't know if you remember in the past, this disease was called philanitepticial cystitis. <coughs> Why this name? Because this disease is very similar to the uh, interstitial cystitis of women, okay? But when another study compared the histopathology between what's happening in women and what's happening in cats, it was totally different. And for that reason, this name actually uh, is not a good option. About the prevalence or frequency, the different type of uh, cystitis, we can see in this table that non obstructing is more common than we thought. Okay? And what happened? Probably the owner don't see the, the clinical sign when the cat presents uh, uh, like, uh, idiopathic cystitis, mainly in the female cat. Another one is the recurrent form. Recurrent form could be, maybe there's different study, but the tendency is to be low prevalence, and uh, that's got that the recurrence can be every two months or every month, and sometimes we can confuse with the persistent chronic cystitis. This is another form of cystitis, and this one, the chronic or persistent or recurrent, uh, needs a um, special treatment sometimes. What is the risk factor? We have mainly the patient factor. This disease ranges between 1 year old to 15 uh, years, uh, uh, 15 years old. Um, it's more common in young animals, probably for the stress, even less than seven years old. And there is not a predisposition. And, uh, and our experience, uh, and according to the study, is more frequent in males than in females. Another thing that uh, we have seen in all the study is more common in sterilized uh, patients. In the past, uh, one of the things that everybody thinking was that when you castrate young, a young cat, the red trap, the side of the red trap was small. But a recent uh, study does, um, does <coughs> it doesn't improve that. That the normal is the red is normal when you sterilize a cat when it's young. Okay. Another thing that is very important is the overweight. And the overweight is alongside the sedentary lifestyle, and that depends on us and depends on the owner. And you can see mainly in stressful cats, okay? <coughs> there is another factor like environmental. Here it's very important the modification, uh, multimodal environmental modification, and where we find a cat with society in a multi cat household indoor cats, uh, scan access to the uh, high places, depends on of the type of the, of the litter, mainly the camping litter is more frequent to produce or that the cat is associated to the uh, idiopathic uh, cystitis, okay? That is the bold letter, that is the, their evidence uh, support that. But there is another uh, stuff that we have to consider. Maybe the litter tray is not quite on a safe area, food and water is not in a safe area, and conflict with another cat in the house. That is very important, the socialization inside of the cat, because influence uh, over the stress on behalf of the cat. And more important, no hunting behavior has been associated, but it's not so strong the evidence, but it's another thing we have to consider when we treat a cat with feline cystitis. Another group of risk factors is the nutritional. 
drive, drive diet is most associated with the uh, uh, philosophical low water intake, and when the owners do a frequent changes of diet that can produce a stress for the cat, and this produce finally the uh, chronic cystitis. What we know about the pathophysiology, uh, we know that it's multifactorial, is it the brain implicated in, is it the, the, the bladder implicated? We're going to talk a little bit about the pathophysiology. What's happened in a normal cat that responds <coughs> adequately to the stress? <coughs> Sorry. I'm going the last comment of the The chronic stress, what's happened? It stimulates the hypothalamus for produce a corticotropin releasing factor. And this corticotropin releasing factor exerts a um, positive feedback over the pituitary gland and over the leucus ceruleus. The leucus ceruleus is that can produce a norepinephrine, okay? And epinephrine. And the weight of the pituitary gland, uh, the anterior pituitary gonna produce uh, ACTH, and this CTH is gonna stimulate to the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. Okay, and this cortisol exerts a negative feedback over the pituitary and over of the hypothalamus to try to calm down or decrease the response of the stress. And then another, uh, the another uh, way is in the leucus ceruleum, the body produces norepinephrine, epinephrine, and this can activate the sympathetic, uh, sympathetic nervous system, and this stimulates the bladder, even can produce an uh, increase of permeability of the bladder. What's happened? That, that cortisol that the body is producing in the cat can exert a negative feedback over the leucus ceruleus. That's happening in a normal cat. What's happening in a cat with philaneuropathic cystitis? Okay, these cats, everybody thinking that is not prepared adequately to respond to the stress. But, okay? And, um, and what happened? When this cat produced cortisol, this cortisol is low. It's within the normal limits, but it's low, okay? And this level of cortisol are unable, unable to uh, exert a feedback negative over the pituitary line and over the hypothalamus. And for that reason, all the time is producing ACTH and is producing norepinephrine and uh, is producing all the time epinephrine and norepinephrine and can produce all the changes that we're going to see on the bladder. What's happening in the bladder? Okay. We have talking about that the stress, mainly the sympathetic nervous system, can produce an uh, increase of the permeability of the urothelium, okay? And this uh, increase of permeability increases the numbers of the C fiber. What is, or what are the C fiber? I fiber mm, uh, that control the pain, mainly the neurologic pain, okay? And this cat, uh, we don't know why, this number of fiber is increases. What's happened? The substance P is released, uh, and this substance, substance P gonna stimulate more uh, substance P receptor, and can produce pain, vasodilation, vasculitis, submucosal edema, edema, smooth muscle, muscle uh, contraction, and muscle degranulation. We have to remember that the cat, this is a mast cells species I call, because you can find a lot of mast cells in a cat. And one of the places that we can find this kind of cell is in the bladder, mainly in the urothelium, okay? What's happening in the cat with cystitis, uh, uh, hepatic cystitis, is increases in number. That, is, that was proved time ago, and this increase of number of mast cells, uh, mast cells can uh, produce a degranulization and uh, release histamine, heparin, serotonin, and cytokine and prostaglandin. And that, uh, for own way, 
stimulate as well this uh, fever C, okay? What clinical sign we can find? <coughs> or, or as uh, now the clinical sign in the obstructive gut, you can find normothermia, hypothermia, shock, uh, dehydration, heart rate normal, radicardia, market bladder distension, possible painful on palpation, but when the gut comes in shock, you can see that. And congestive penis all the time it's very important to check the penis. This is one of my patients that the penis is blue, it's congested for the leaking. <coughs> Sorry. And congested. <laughs> and uh, an alopecia around the penis, apathy, <coughs> anorexia, and vomiting. Okay? And we have in another side the obstructed cat. And this cat can present dysuria, stanguria, polyuria, hematuria, uh, poglization, uh, excessive living of the penis or vagina, alopecia of the caudal abdomen. That is important and is uncommon, but you can find alopecia in the caudal uh, abdomen. And you can see, or you can think that the, this cat presents an alopecia for uh, allergy, for uh, fleas or something, but you have to consider this in your differential diagnosis, okay? Apathy and anorexia. What tests we have to do? Well, I have tried to summary a little bit that the tests uh, we need, but uh, where I am working right now, we do all blood works, I mean all the tests. Um, so, uh, you can do a CBC, you can do a uh, complete blood chemistry, uh, urine analysis, with or without uh, urine culture and sensitivity. This is a little bit dis uh, discussed or art because um, this is, this is uh, presented mainly in young animals. And what age is the most common when a cat presents a urinary tract infection? Older than seven years? What is what's coming? Yeah. Younger, but and the UTI is more frequent in younger or old cat? In old, okay? Mainly you have to think about the CKD and the CKD decrease the urinary specific uh, gravity, okay? And that predisposed to infection. So sometimes it's not mainly uh, mandatory to do a culture. Okay, I do a culture because I am working in a referral case and all the cats have been, uh, cat, uh, have been catheterized before many times and many of these cats present some secondary urinary infection, mainly for the management, okay? And what image uh, you have to do? You can combine, all the time you have to think that x-ray is complementary to ultrasound, not one replaced to another one, that is important to think about it, okay? And the first option is to do X-ray, okay, <coughs> X-ray. And in this ray, you have to include the penis, okay, the return penis, to try to rule out that there is no other person or calculate, okay. And you can do an abdominal ultrasound, okay. What do you think? Uh, probably, if I have to choose, depends on the uh, how much money can afford the owner. I can choose the, the x-ray and explain all the stuff that I can miss. And if I can pay the owner an abdominal ultrasound but not x-ray, I prefer to do uh, an abdominal ultrasound, okay? Um, <clears throat> what is important, when we went to uh, our clinic come uh, blocked cats, we have to try to stabilize before to take all sample or make an ultrasound because sometimes if you lost more time to, to doing test, the patient can die, okay? So it's very important to stabilize before to, to do uh, all the tests. All the time, uh, at the same time, you have to consider to use the ECG, okay? Uh, we monitor mainly for the arrhythmia can, can be produced for the acidosis or can be produced for the uh, hyperkalemia, even the bradycardia, okay? And in obstructive cat, if you can do it, you can do, or I try to do all the time, is uh, blood cases to evaluate the acidosis. This is a table mainly to uh, what is the 
essential to do to arrive at diagnosis and what is your different diagnosis uh, depends on the clinical signs or presentation of the, of the cat. Mainly, uh, if you want to take a picture, uh, you can do it. Uh, but when we have a chronic cat, it's mandatory, or <coughs> with a clinic, chronic clinical sign, it's mandatory to investigate and to do more and more uh, tests. How we treat an obstructive cat? <coughs> okay, all the time we have to consider first the hypovolemic shock. Okay, what kind of fluid do you prefer to use? Ringer lactates, sodium chloride, grab, push up your head. <laughs> uh, like the ringer lactate, uh, chloride, <coughs> no one chloride, okay, perfect, that's like. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, the best option is to do the ringer like that, but all the time, in the past, uh, people tell us uh, you have to be careful because the ringer like that has potassium, okay? And a cat can with hyperkalemia, and that could be dangerous, mainly for the bradycardia and the arrhythmia, okay? But there are two studies that uh, prove that is in it, okay? In this way, uh, it's better to, to use Ritter lactato because in this study, compared to sodium chloride and Ritter lactato, uh, lactate uh, decreased the hypokalemia when you uh, this broke uh, to the cat almost to the same time. And we have to remind that uh, Ritter lactate has a tampon to stand, and this is better for the acidosis. And what happened with the uh, sodium chloride can uh, increase the acidosis, okay, or worsen it. So for that, uh, for that reason, it's better to use regen lactate, okay. How we manage the hypotension? We do crystal of volus uh, at 10 to 20 milliliter per kilogram over 15 to 30 minutes, um, and you can do mainly till or up to uh, three consecutive policies, even four, but if you don't see any kind of response, you have to do another substance or another drugs, like, or such as norepinephrine or fresh frozen plasma, or frozen plasma, okay? What happened with the uh, synthetic colloids? It's not so much uh, recommended, because in human beings have been associated these uh, starts, uh, starts starts with the kidney failure, okay? So I try to not use these, these uh, fluids. What is important? We need, when we uh, unblock the cat, we need to decrease uh, quickly uh, the levels of potassium or creatinine. And for that reason, it's very important the rehydration, okay? The rehydration you can do in uh, between four and two, eight hours. Okay, but more important, rule out or harm murmur when you uh, uh, rule out the harm murmur, or even if you if you uh, if you hear a harm murmur, you need to do an echocardiogram to um, to uh, sorry <laughs> echocardiogram. Don't worry, uh, echocardiogram uh, to do a. Um, uh, uh, and uh, a heart disease, sorry. Um, what happened uh, when you unblock the cat and the cat is cathetericized? Uh, you have to replace, and it's hydrated, you have to replace the fluid according to the urine output, okay? But you have to consider that, that in, the, in the third talk, we want to talk that produce an polyuria post obstructive, okay? Or post obstructive polyuria, okay? but we will talk later about that. Hypothermia. When you have a cat uh, with a severe hypothermia, hypothermia, hypothermia mainly uh, 36.5, you have to be active, increase the patient temperature. You can use red lamp, uh, you can use hot water bottle, warm sandbag, blanket, but be careful with the ones, okay? Right? Because sometimes that can happen. 
okay, at the burns. And how we treat, treat the hyperkalemia? When a cat presents a mild hyperkalemia, that is, if you can find the levels, uh, only the fluid uh, is, is okay, and probably in four hours, six hours, that's potassium, if the cat is <coughs> unblocked, uh, it's gonna be okay. Uh, moderate to severe plus arrhythmia, mainly the levels of uh, potassium are increased, and in that way you have to use a cardiac protector like a calcium gluconate and this dose and you have to remember you have to apply it slowly and all the time you have to check the ECG okay because when you use the, this product can produce arrhythmias and when we have a severe uh, arrhythmia we can use insulin Okay, you have to, uh, we have to remember that the insulin produces uh, the seed on the cell, the glucose, extra plasma glucose inside uh, of, the, of, the, of the cell and uh, at the same time can produce that <coughs> the potassium gold at the wrong side of the, of the glucose. Uh, I am not used to the uh, CRI, constant rate infusion, because all the cat presents so much uh, hypoglycemia and you have to control more. And when I did my residency, uh, we, used, uh, we used to use uh, this uh, protocol of, um, of insulin and glucose in, in cats, okay? And this uh, protocol don't produce so much hypoglycemia and so you can be uh, more quiet. And when the cat presents severe arrhythmia and marked uh, acidosis is when we use uh, bicarbonate. When we use the bicarbonate, that is not common. I, if I remember all my cases, probably I have used it twice, okay? One during my residency and probably one two years ago where I am working right now. Okay, because um, the number of the yeah the cut of that you have to consider to apply uh, bicarbonate is when the pH is low than seven point one. Okay, and this is the way when we apply we apply the third of the of the total dose uh, and, um, slow intravenous. And after you add everything to the to the bottle, and uh, and you have to calculate uh, the rate of the fluid. And all the time we hope we must not forget the vomiting. When come a cat uh, an emergency, the first thing that I when I put the uh, intravenous catheter is put um, uh, an antimeric. You can use Maropitam to this use, or you can use Ondansetron. Probably the Ondansetron is my second option. And no use for the vomiting in cats metoclopramate, because the cat doesn't have receptor, dopamine receptor, in the center of vomiting, okay? And another thing that I have learned in these years in that cat can present hypocalcemia. How many of you measure the total calcium in this cat with fluid? It's not common because probably before of my residency I did it as well. Okay? And what's happened with the calcium? It's, al it's alterates the metabolism. Probably it's because the phosphorylation is secondary to the obstruction can influence in the calcium metabolism. There is a PTA resistance uh, or ACE-based uh, abnormality can produce this uh, hypocalcemia. And this hypocalcemia could, could be mild, that is the most common, could be moderate and could be severe. And when a cat presents a severe hypocalcemia can be very dangerous for, uh, for uh, its uh, own life. Okay? What sign we can observe when a patient presents hypocalcemia? A stiffness, tremors, seizures, um, hyperthermia, and in that way we have to treat. When we have to treat um, uh, a hypocalcemia, there is a note currently a cut off, but the cut off that you can read mainly is 
uh, when the uh, ionic uh, calcium is uh, 0.7, okay? Even if the cat doesn't present any kind of clinical signs, okay? And this is the dose of calcium gluconate that we use uh, for treating the hypercalcemia. Catheterization. Uh, I, ha I am lucky because uh, I, I work with uh, diplomates in anesthesia, in anesthesia, so they, or all the group in anesthesia, uh, prepare uh, all, the, all the cuts or the protocol for anesthesia, but this is the main protocol that we use where I am working right now in Anicura, Valencia Sur. And another thing that if you are very good doing block, you can do the sacrococcygeal block. I am internist, so I have never uh, done this. Uh, I have no experience doing this. But with the block, uh, can, can allow to, to gain time, and the urethra is dilated just a little bit and be, and be more easy to catheterize the, the cat. Okay? There is another thing, like the use of intravesical atracurium, there is only an uh, article from the uh, JSA, and in this article it was demonstrated that when the people has not experienced catheterizing the uh, cat, is more uh, quick doing it, okay? But I have no experience with uh, atracurium. And more important, all the time, sedate the cat for make the catheterization because if the cat is wake up and you um, any movement can produce and tears in the urethra and that's predisposed to stenosis okay and and catheterization some people say all the penis area I, I say all the penis area some people don't do it and wash the skin and for the skin and the glass <coughs> with chlorexidine, that, that's the same that we use for the surgery. And place, uh, uh, all the time I place a um, uh, socket gas uh, with warm water and make over the penis in that way, okay? That produces mainly that if, uh, if there is a plaque inside of the retina, is liberate, okay? And when you do some uh, contraction or comprimis the, the bladder, sometimes you can jump on the wall and start the cat to urine. And make this movement after to, to put the gas, you do the movement from the base of the penis to the top of the penis, okay? Rolling the penis, and sometimes you can see, like in this picture, that the plaque start to uh, go out from the penis, okay? What happened with the cystosynthesis? How many of you do cystosynthesis in this class, like protocol? Get up your hand. Okay. What happened? Uh, you can do it, okay? Uh, even uh, there is only this abstract uh, evaluating what happened in this class when you do the cystosynthesis. What happened? <coughs> that uh, the cat can produce uroperitoneal but without clinical sign. It's a like, it's like a, a small uroperitoneum and it's present even in 15% of cases when you do the cystosynthesis. When I do the cystosynthesis, when I can uh, unblock the cat and I need to gain time, and I try to do it uh, with, uh, 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 with Oh, my objective, my objective is trying to uh, leave empty the bladder totally to try to gain time and, and, and again the filtration glomerular ratio increase and that way can, can uh, allow to decrease uh, the level of creatinine, okay? But uh, I, I, I usually not use the cystosynthesis because uh, we try all the time to catheterize the, the cats uh, quickly. Which kind of catheter we have to use? Yeah, you can see a lot of them. I prefer this one, okay? It's Mila, it's, it's the trend like Mila. And uh, this is soft or smooth uh, catheter. And it's more expensive uh, also, but it's the best option to try to decrease the traumatism of the, of the bladder when you have treated this cat. And the most famous catheter is this one, the Tomcat catheter. And this one is very rich, it does sometimes increase the, 
the irritation in the urothelium and that can increase the number of recurrence. Even had been a study that the diameter of the catheter influence over the recurrence. Well, if you use a, a small catheter, it's better for, for the cat and reduce, reduce the number of catheter, uh, the recurrence, sorry. I try to use all the time um, DJ to try to lubricate the, the urethra and uh, this kind of suture is the ophthalmology surgery to try to not traumatize so much the percussion. And when we do the, the, the catheterization, you have to try to more parallel to the spine, the penis, and it's easy, easy because we have to remind that the cat had present a little deviation, it's not so uh, marked like uh, dogs, but this deviation can be uh, more difficult or can difficult uh, the catheterization of the cat. One of the things you, you can use is this kind of uh, catheter, mainly to do the, the flush, okay? And I do all the time with the, even the, with the same catheter, I, 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 I do the flushing, okay? And more important, try to do everything more sterile possible, okay? Because you can, uh, you can introduce uh, any kind of infection over the bladder. Well, how many times we have to maintain or uh, remove a catheter? Maybe it's 24 hours to 36 hours. When the exotavia is uh, resolated, when the resolution of the post obstructive diuresis, uh, that is a little bit hard as well because uh, sometimes some cats uh, are polyuric <laughs> after five or seven days uh, after the, um, uh, they have been uh, unblocked. Clear uh, when you see a clearer urine, and all the time remove the catheter uh, under sedation. When I what I do when I sedate the cat, I take out uh, the catheter, the catheter, and before they, they take out the catheter, introduce some uh, fluid, one fluid, and after take out the catheter and compress. Uh, I, I press the, the ureta to be uh, if the permeability of the ureta, and sometimes you can see that pull out the urine without any problem. In that way is when I say, okay, uh, four hours more in the hospital, three hours more, and I do the discharge. What's happened with the uh, urine culture in a, in, uh, of the catheter or in a cat or in the, in the, in the back? collective back is not necessary. Before, that was a recommendation in the 2000, I think, uh, there are two study. But right now, according to the new guides uh, for the antimicrobial uh, drugs, it's not recommended to do um, a, a culture or bacteria, uh, bacteria culture in a cat when uh, you take out uh, the catheter because you can find uh, contaminated flora inside uh, of the catheter or even in the collecting, uh, collecting bag. Okay? When I see this image in cat, or oh, I see so much uh, crystalluria like uh, sand, uh, this, the question is necessary uh, to make, um, to make a flushing in the bladder and this two study, there is no find any kind of difference when you do the flash in cat uh, uh, and a cat you don't do it. The recurrence is the same, but I still do it because I think the cat is more comfortable because when you have a society and you have that kind of that number of liter side product is irritable <coughs> for, for the urothelium and that can be not so good for, for the cat. At the same time, I think the same uh, when you find this kind of crystalluria or market crystalluria. So I do the, the wash or, or flush in the bladder to, to see the, the urine more, more clear. Another thing very important that I forget to mention is never to use a prophylactic antibiotic, mainly right now, because 
real uh, fighting, or we are fighting uh, or mainly for the resistance and uh, 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 bacteria. So for that reason, don't use uh, prophylactic antibiotic. If you use adequately managed of the uh, closed circuit uh, of the <coughs> urine, you don't need to use antibiotic cover. For that reason, we use uh, with a teacher, we use this where I connect the fluids and you can use a collecting bag or even the bottle of the fluids, okay? But very important to maintain a closed uh, um, circuit, okay? That is not recommended, or open circuit is not recommended, but because that predisposes many, many times to a, a, a UTI uh, uh, acquired, and this UTI can be multi-resistant if this cat is infected in the clinic. Okay, we're gonna about we're gonna talk about the treating of the feline idiopathic cystitis. This is a table that uh, shows us the evidence. Okay, the strong or high evidence is the evidence type one, and the lower or weak evidence is lab number four. Okay. What is important to consider when we see a cat with the fair time and not obstructive uh, FIC? that this disease is self-limited, mainly in female cat, okay? Even if you don't try anything, the cat improve alone, okay? But we're gonna talk here about the treatment in this cat. <clears throat> Analgesic or anti-inflammatories. Uh, mainly, uh, there is not so much evidence, evidence about the use of the opioid or synthetic opioid in cat, mainly because all the study is even uh, uh, uncivic, I think, to leave a cat without any kind of painkiller, okay? What is the best option in cat is just is used to uh, is used the buprenorphine to this dose. You can use mainly uh, every eight hours is the recommendation. And the best uh, way to apply it is intravenous or term or uh, term mucosal, okay? Even if you inject the cat subcutaneous or intramuscular, is less effective than uh, transmucosal, okay? Another uh, analgesic you can use is butorphanol. I have not experienced, and you have to remember that butorphanol is mainly depressive, or produce mainly a depression more, more than a painkiller. And fentanyl, uh, I have not experienced fentanyl in cats, and all the time you have to remember, we have to remember that the patches of fentanyl, what's happening is the cat eats the patch of, of fentanyl on <laughs> a huge intoxication. So, I, I don't recommend to use the fentanyl, okay? What's happened with the meloxicam? How many of you use meloxicam in this patient? Okay, okay. <coughs> What's happened with meloxicam? There's two uh, studies, okay? And this study, one of, uh, of them uh, was, uh, was used only for five days, okay? The, the meloxicam only for a short term of medication. And another one was used for two weeks. This is a long-term medication, and they will, uh, and they both the study. They didn't find any kind of significant difference when you use the meloxicam. Even you have to be uh, very careful when you use meloxicam because when the cat cam is dehydrate, dehydrated and you use meloxicam, you can induce uh, a, a acute kidney injury. So I don't use a meloxicam mainly, maybe in the chronic cases of recurrent uh, disease, okay? And the prednisone, there is another study, very old, and that evaluates between comparison uh, about the, if decrease the number of days that the cat is hospitalized in comparison <coughs> with you do it, and there is a well, and there is not uh, a significant difference between them, so they, they use the prednisone in these cases, is not recommended. What is the new era? Mainly is about the gabapentin and pregabalin. How many of you use these kind of drugs in cats right now? Okay, I think it's a very good option because when I have talking about the pathology, I was talking about the uh, neurologic pain and what do these kind of drugs, gabapentin and pregabalin, are very good option. So I am waiting the study 
to try to use it. I have used it uh, of label because I don't have the evidence as well, but in my experience, I have used it in two cats with a record inside, and they're going to very well. So I think that it good, uh, they are going to have a very good option in the future. <coughs> Antipasmodic. Okay, all, when I see or when we read about uh, FIC or fruit, all recommend, or all paper, all book recommend that you say prasocyte. What's happened right now? What's evidence, evidence we have? We have these <coughs> two evidence that the prasocyte right now no working. I mean, no decrease the number of recurrence the first uh, the first month that the cat is treated, uh, or the first days the cat uh, is treated. That is very recent investigation. But if you read the material and method, and that is very important when I read an article and try to uh, teach uh, to my resident this, because uh, the dose that they use, even was uh, in this one. If I remember, the dose is adequate, but twice a day. Um, the most recommendation to use the prasocyte is three a day, okay? And this another study, uh, and I think that when you, yeah, they do the same twice a day. So, this study say that doesn't work the prasocyte, but I am still using because uh, I am need another study when the dose and frequency adequate that this that drug is recommended. So we have to read all the publications with a little bit of care, okay? And another kind of uh, <coughs> antipasmodic drug is the phenoxybenzamine. Uh, here you have uh, phenoxybenzamine. No? No. Okay, because I think it's disappeared in Europe, but it was a very good option, okay? And what's happened with the stretching musculature? Sometimes you can use uh, diazepam. Diazepam you can use mainly in the recurring cases or chronic cases, okay? But uh, have been proved the oral form of the diazepam, and this oral form can produce uh, liver necrosis. So have to advertise to the uh, owner about that, okay? And another uh, stretching musculature and tripasmodic is the alprazolam. I have not experience with, with them, but uh, you can use it, okay? Another thing that you have to consider is the multimodal uh, environmental, mainly stoic, play routine, food distance from the litter, water distance from the litter, scratching post like a cat tree, uh, elevated observation site, hiding places, this is like cat color, okay? And, uh, and this is Lenga, a little tray care, frequent cleaning, uh, preferred type of litter, some cats choose is litter or the substrate of is litter that they prefer. Um, water phone time and one litter box plus the number of cats that you have in home. That is very important to decrease the stress, okay? When you use the phone time, you have to try to do it uh, by step by step exchange and you have to put the bowl and the phone time and the cat has to choose which one prefer. And mainly the cat um, delayed one week, two weeks to uh, prefer one of them, okay? And then again, we have to study about the phone time in cat and this study doesn't prove that decrease the, the, the specific gravity. What happened? The design again. Uh, this study uh, evaluates seven, uh, like uh, uh, 36 hours for phone time and different phone times, and this one is was more the, uh, less than seven days. So probably uh, the time the cat is not uh, is not just uh, used to, um, or they couldn't uh, elect which one prefer. Wet diet is very important. Uh, before uh, I mentioned a lot of the diet that we have in um, Affinity Advance. And this is have uh, evidence low three because decrease the 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 recurrence when you use uh, wet diet in one year is the eleven percent um, because when you use dry diet the recurrence is higher okay 
we have to try to uh, decrease the specific gravity low than uh, 1.40 and you have to try to the cat again choose is the cat prefer the dry food or the wet food and we can make or the owner can make the food to only uh, a, a wet food and that would, that would be amazing but remember, all the change, the water bowels, or when you change the diet, can produce a stress and the disease uh, uh, recurrent. What what we know about the treat the, the feline facial pheromone? We don't have evidence. The evidence that exists is only with the anxiety. They decrease the anxiety, so we don't know exactly what happened with this cat with uh, uh, FIC, okay? So, when I recommend the use of uh, uh, facial pheromones, <coughs> only in recurrent and chronic cases. What's happened with the glycosaminoglycans? All the time I think the pills are so big and sometimes it's very difficult to medicate a cat. And this medication can produce a stress in the cat and even produce recurrence of the clinical signs. So, the evidence is totally weak at uh, currently, uh, so I recommend mainly in uh, chronic cases. And there is another nutraceutical supplement like uh, antidepressive or natural antidepressive uh, that coming from the dairy, dairy products. And there is no evidence about uh, about uh, that this working or not in the FIC. And again. I use only in recurring cases or chronic cases, and most of them is combination with glucosaminoglycans. Mm -hmm. But remember, if the medication stress the cat, it's better not give her, give it, give it, <coughs> or give him. This is we have more evidence in the chronic cases. Um, we know that probably this cat is totally stressful, so we can use. Tricyclic uh, 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 antidepressant, and the, the main is the amitriptyline. Okay, this is anticholinergic, antihistamine, antipsychotic, analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and all these words have remembered the facio, the pathophysiology. So this is a good option for recurrent or chronic uh, cases, and we have evidence that this medication works. Another, another medication uh, that there is mm, uh, low information is Cormipram, I don't have experience with, with, with them. And the amitriptyline can produce side effects, sedation, the first date, the, the just that the medication, apath apathy, weight gain, you have to remember the obesity can produce uh, FIC, and urinary irritation, and this better this cat is all the time or when the frequency is urination is uh, increased is better that is low the, the frequency and the response of to this medication is delayed okay the cat needs almost one month to see uh, any uh, benefit of this medication uh, what's happen if we use in acute cases because um, would be a good option because according to the pathophysiology it could, could work. But this study that was published recently, they find that in the short term that you use uh, the uh, amitriptyline, even if it's a, a study level one evidence, doesn't work. So only use for the chronic cases, okay? When we use the chronic uh, or long term this medication, we have to decrease the dose when, like uh, when we use uh, prednisone or prednisolone or glucocorticoid, okay? Uh, slow by slow, okay? In two weeks. And finally, there is some uh, oh, surgery, okay? One of my mentors all the time tell me that if the cat <laughs> finally uh, we have to do uh, a surgery, I have, uh, I have not do a good management, of medic <laughs> medical management of the cat. So I try to avoid this one all the time. Uh, 
well, what happened that sometimes some owner tell you this is the last time that I can pay uh, this recurrent of the clinical sales, so I'm gonna euthanize in the future. So in this in these cases, I I say we have to do the, the salary, and the salary have um, adverse events or, or uh, consequence. Many of the consequences can be recurrent and chronic. Um, uh, oh, sorry, when you apply the the, the surgeries in recurrent and chronic FIC, you can use it in recurrent or diseases. And even in, in a recent uh, publication, the hour satisfaction was very high when you use this this surgery. And this is how the the surgeons do the surgery because I don't know because I am done this. And this is another another way to do or me, this is called transpelvic urotrostomy, have never done in any cat this kind of, of, of uh, surgery, but mainly you can use when uh, there is a traumatic uh, event of, of the uretra or tears, right? And this one is the prepubic urotrostomy surgery. I don't know if you have experience with this surgery. Okay, I have done twice in, uh, in two cats and one in, in one dog, and <laughs> And we're going to talk about the complications. Okay, if we see the complication in short term, very prenatal retrostomy and prepubic retrostomy, obviously prepubic uh, retrostomy have so much high number of the complications, mainly cystitis and mainly UTI. Okay, and the short term again, the prepubic uh, retrostomy have higher number of, of complications in comparison with the perianal urethrostomy. In my experience, uh, these three patients I have sent to this kind of surgery because the owner asked me this, uh, it was horrible, okay? All the time present infection and uh, leaking uh, of urine the, in the period dermatitis, so I don't recommend it. I recommend it. Uh, instead of the the owner ask you, okay? And this is uh, a very old uh, table that we show that that the, we are be, we are doing a better management or clinical management of the fluids in cat uh, and decrease the number of the urethrostomy. And thank you very much.